Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Loyalty and Loyalty TV. Today's episode features an innovative ad tech company called Adjo, who has just joined us as partners and sponsors of our show. Adjo is a leading advertising and monetization platform, providing loyalty program operators with compelling content that uses the power of rewarded gaming to grow your bottom line revenue through everyday fun. Adjo has already raised more than $100 million in venture capital funding, and they have some extraordinary clients on board using their proprietary technologies enjoying new monetization strategies for their business, while also creating a meaningful engagement loop with their members. Here to share the story and insights around the power of gaming to connect with your members is Thomas Yiannopoulos, VP of Revenue for Agio in the Americas. I hope you enjoy our conversation. So, Tommy, welcome to Let's Talk Loyalty and to Loyalty TV. It's a absolute pleasure to be here. I appreciate y'all having me. It's uh, I'm excited for this conversation. Amazing. And I know you are also a podcaster, Tommy, so that also puts the pressure on me yeah. to make sure you think this is awesome by the time we wrap up the conversation. <laughs> kind of, but it, it also puts the pressure on me because uh, I haven't been on this side of it very often, you know, and I... Uh, I know what a good guest is and I know what a not great guest is sometimes. <laughs> Generally speaking, all my guests have been wonderful, right? But uh, yeah. but no, uh, I, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's a weird place to be when you're on the other side of it so often. I totally get it, Tommy. Well, listen, as I said to you off air, we're here to have a great chat um, at the end of the day. <laughs> Genuinely, I set up this show so that I would learn from cool people about cool stuff that they're doing. So that is the, the single biggest and most important thing for everybody who is listening and watching. So listen, let's get into it. Um, as you know, we have a standard opening question for all of our guests, uh, which we use to basically pick your brains about loyalty programs that you might admire, either as a personal consumer or you might have seen in your own market or around the world. Yeah. So just to kick us off, I'm going to ask you, Tommy, what is your favorite loyalty program? Yeah, I, I gave this question some thought. There was a bunch that came to mind, right? I think the McDonald's My Rewards program is one of the most impressive ones in terms of the scale of it. I think Starbucks has an incredible loyalty program. Yeah. Uh, I think my credit card provider, American Express, has an amazing program as well. There's so many really, really compelling uh, and well thought out programs. But at the end of the day, I settled on Fetch, which is uh, the largest rewards and shopping app in America, something like 11 million weekly active, five or six million daily active users. It's a massive program. Uh, wow. And what I love about how Fetch has approached the subject of loyalty and rewarding consumers is they've taken a vertical, which is more or less the cashback vertical. And I think they've done two things exceptionally well. One, they provide a customers or consumers a mechanism through which they can earn without interrupting their lives, right? That's what I think a great loyalty program can do. It can be additive to the things that you're already doing in your everyday life. And Fetch is a wonderful microcosm of how do mm. we add value at all these different journeys that a user or a person might go on in their day-to-day -day life, right? Whether it's shopping for uh, cereal, shopping for Tide Pods, needing to get some alcohol, for example, or in our case, gaming, right? Which we'll probably get into at some point. But yeah. I think their ability to provide a comprehensive service is uh, exceptional uh, yeah. and one that doesn't ask a lot of customers and gives them a lot in return. On top of that, something I think they've done that I wish I saw more of is leverage mechanisms and uh, strategies implemented in the gaming vertical into their application, right? Gamifying the experience somewhat to make it fun to earn, to make it fun to get rewards, right? And make it yeah. not feel like a chore. Things yeah. like you know, adding a leaderboard in there is a really cool way to create mm -hmm. uh, a gamified uh, component of the application. Adding social yeah. components to it is really valuable, right? To create community around this thing that we're all doing. Yeah. Uh, and also just having a point system, a soft currency for all intents and purposes, right? That's a, a, a strategy we see implemented everywhere in the gaming space, right? And when you look at mobile in particular, uh, Mobile games really dominate consumer time on their smartphones, generally speaking, right? Because mobile games have done so much to provide yeah. really fun ways of getting quick entertainment that's satisfying to customers. And I really appreciate how Fetch has taken a lot from that and put it into a 
kind of not analogous vertical, which is the cashback vertical. I think it's a really impressive uh, piece of technology and a product. Yeah. And it uh, it would be remiss if we did not comment that they're also amazing partners and clients of Adjo. So well done you on yeah. working with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm, I, to be clear, I'm not just saying it because they're a partner of ours. Like, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I you know, it's funny. Yeah. Even, even if they weren't, I'd probably still talk about Fetch because I think what they're doing uh, yeah. as a business is incredibly yeah. uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I think their ethos of live rewarded is really cool, right? Again, Trying nice. to, to, to leverage that idea of you yeah. don't need to interrupt your life, but we can add value to your life everywhere you go. And I think that's yeah. a really, really cool way to approach loyalty. Wow. That is a very powerful tagline. Absolutely, Tommy. So live rewarded. I think every single person listening to this show is is all about rewarding people in a way that really feels yeah. meaningful. So what I love about the loyalty community is everybody has that intention. Like, how can we actually take care of people? So it sounds yeah. like an incredible depth of thinking that they've put into building a fun proposition. And I'll be dying to hear how it all works. Um, so well done, Fetch. And and open invitation, of course, to come on the podcast, because we always love to hear from cool brands, especially ones that have a mil 11 million, I think you said, uh, weekly active users. Yeah. So incredible scale. Job. It is. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's funny as well, Tommy, I did a, a panel discussion here last week in an event with um, two amazing airlines that are very close to my heart for different reasons. Uh, one was Aer Lingus, uh, my national carrier back in Ireland. And the yeah. other is Qantas Loyalty. And one of the things that came out as we were just kind of prepping for that conversation is gamification has been talked about for so long, but still it doesn't, I don't think it has even remotely achieved its potential. There's just so much more that can be done. And I know you guys have amazing insights in terms of, as you just said, gaming is something that's not just now, you know, the guys on the console some years ago, you know, no, in their yeah. in their bedroom. So it is a different style of engagement for people, I think it's fair to say say yeah it's completely different um and i think part of it is recognizing kind of what you just mentioned right what does it mean to be a gamer today right when, when we think about what you just said right console yeah. gaming yeah that's of course a huge industry a huge economy in and of itself but when we look at something like the smartphone right uh gaming is as pervasive as any industry when it comes to the smartphone, right? It, it, it rivals social in terms of things that people do on their phones. I mean, yeah. in the world today, there's 2.2 billion mobile gamers. That's an enormous, enormous number, right? Wow. Uh, when you consider it in comparison to the total population of the globe, right? Yeah. 43% uh, of time in the US is spent uh, on smartphones playing games, right? So this is something that everyone does, not everyone, but a, a big enough yeah. population of people do consistently enough where yeah. I think it's really important that when we think about gamification, we also change the paradigm of what it means to be a gamer today, right? It no yeah. longer means being on your console. Now it means how do people seek out entertainment? How do people spend their time on their smartphones? And gaming is just everywhere, right? So incorporating gamification, whether it's things like leaderboards, whether it's things like social uh, yeah. components, points, currency system, all that stuff that people are really, really familiar with now because yeah. they're spending so much time doing it. everything from Wordle to your really, really deep RPG games. There is a massive, massive scope of people who yeah. enjoy gaming. Mm. Uh, and I think incorporating it makes so much sense for, for every brand. Totally, totally. And I didn't, don't know that acronym, actually, Tommy. What does RPG mean? Uh, it's like a role player, like it's like an intense ah. uh, role player game. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. Sorry to, to challenge you, but I always feel you're like, good. you know. <laughs> no, you're not challenging me. <laughs> I actually had to double think. I was like, do I even know? I've said RPG so many times. Do I remember what it stands for? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. happy I came up with what I think is the answer. Well done. <laughs> yeah. No, but I like the fact that you're saying, you know, the paradigm actually has shifted because the label yeah. gamer is not something that I really identify with, but I love word games. You know, like I do have crosswords yeah. on my phone. So actually I am behaving in exactly that same kind of way. So I think as program owners listening to this show, it's, I think, a really important shift in terms of how we do kind of think about them. Because I will never be the one playing World of Warcraft, shooting people down. Anything that's got violence no. related, like it's just not my cup of tea. But there is so much things that I can do, whether it's on actually somebody was talking about recently, the New York Times website. 
as a yeah. brilliant example where they've essentially now decided that the New York Times is a gaming business that happens to have some journalism attached to it just because yeah. of the dominance of what they're doing. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, that I, I, you know, I, I, I can't speak super well to New York Times, but my assumption there is how we consume news, for example, today has shifted so dramatically, right? Where now, you know, most people, I think, for better or yeah. worse, you know, everyone's opinion is different on this matter, but I think the majority of people probably consume their news through Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah. TikTok is a huge source of news for a lot of people. Facebook, all these social mm -hmm. platforms, frankly, function yeah. as as news for for the vast mm. majority of people who are engaged on their smartphones right yeah but gaming is something people do every day and i think new york times yeah. recognize that that's why they made the acquisition of wordle it's a very very natural fit for them given their uh, yeah. predisposition to having word-based games right and i think yeah. they've recognized that a great way to keep and capture consumer interest is through yeah. gaming and it can be additive to the core function of their business which is news Totally, totally. So we're obviously talking about all of this with, um, I suppose, a very, you know, big idea that you guys are delivering in this whole world. So I think, you know, it's time to get into, just tell us about Agio, Tommy. What exactly is it that you guys do to connect all of these people who are so connected to the world of fun and our audience of loyalty program managers? Yeah, sure. Uh, so... At Agile, we've developed a solution called the Agile Arcade uh, that allows loyalty programs to leverage consumer interest in the world's most popular mobile games. Uh, mm -hmm. They leverage this interest through our technology, uh, which allows them to essentially open up a games portal in their applications where consumers can go discover games that they've probably heard of. And I can name a few in a minute if, 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 if that's valuable yeah. for us. Uh, yeah. Users can go there, discover games, and by playing these games uh, and reaching certain time amounts or reaching, reaching certain milestones in the games, they'll get awarded in that publisher's uh, in-app currency, be it points, miles, mm. cashback, whatever the case may be, right? So uh, yeah. we'll take like a concrete example of, I want to be clear, this isn't a client of ours, right? But I mentioned McDonald's before, they have the My Rewards program. They yeah. could, for all intents and purposes, leverage our technology. It would allow them to open a McDonald's arcade in their application. People would yeah. go there. They would see games like uh, Candy Crush, Monopoly, Go, Coin Master, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And there's, you know, on our platform, some like 1,200 games uh, live today. And when someone plays someone coming like Monopoly Go and reaches level one or whatever the case may be, they'll get rewarded in McDonald's My Rewards points for that completion. Uh, so the idea here, again, is to, I mentioned before, a few stats around how does the mm. global population interact with games or how does the U.S. population interact with games? The idea yeah. here is to capitalize on that consumer interest, expand your loyalty programs to include the thing that people potentially do the most on their smartphones mm. and leverage it as a way to drive up incremental revenue to your brand yeah. as well as incremental engagement with the core functionality of your brand. Uh, yeah. And the third kind of tangential piece that we've seen here actually more recently is uh, a lot of loyalty programs who have leveraged this solution actually are able to acquire more users to their loyalty programs as a result of the solution itself, because they're tapping into, again, that consumer interest in mobile games, diversifying mm. the manner in which people can earn their, their in-app currency, um, mm. and that ultimately drops up uh, acquisition for them. So those are some yeah. of the core functionalities of the technology and some of the core value propositions I think we bring to the market. Incredible. And I guess I'd love we to... We think so. I, well, of course, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's working, you know. Um, I've seen some of your stats and I know we'll be probably talking through some of those. But, you know, again, just from my perspective, hearing the, the pain points that loyalty managers have, you know, an awful lot of the time the conversation is around the fact that, you know, take an airline, for example. Even if I am a frequent flyer, I might be on board an aircraft who knows, 12 days a year, 20 days a year, there are still, you know, 300 odd other days that those brands have all very, very clearly said, we want to be able to engage with our members and be part of their lifestyle. Like they're absolutely repositioning themselves from frequent flyer programs to everyday rewards, everyday connections yeah. and lifestyle programs. So given what we've said about gaming, that's obviously a big opportunity, you know, alongside all of their other propositions, of course, whether it's ancillary revenue or coalition programs, this fun element is the one that I still think um, hasn't really been done in any great scale, if I'm not mistaken. 
No, it has not been done at a great scale. And I'd argue it's probably the most impactful uh, opportunity that just about any uh, brand with a loyalty program has. I, I, I genuinely believe that, right? Yeah. When we think about something like the airline space, uh, I couldn't tell you who they're partnering with, but you mentioned like, you know, in many cases, they're partnering with retail brands. They're partnering with yeah. other tra- like analogous travel brands like Lyft or Uber or something like that. Um, yeah. And all those are valuable, right? Um, but we have to ask ourselves, what is the frequency with which people are mm. doing a the core functionality of your app, which you've already touched on. If you're an airline, you know, mm. maybe a heavy user is booking whatever, 12 flights a year. I don't know. Yeah. Heavy business users probably doing more like 50 to 100 or whatever the case may be. Right. Yeah. But uh, your average user is not using your application very often. Right. Yeah. If your mechanism through which you want to deliver more value to that user is by integrating with, let's say, Nike, for example, then we should also ask ourselves, how often is someone buying a pair of shoes or a hat or a sweatshirt, right? Or if you want to partner with Sephora or Uber or Lyft or any of these brands, yeah. again, it comes down to the question of frequency, mm-hmm. as well as what are we asking our consumers to do in these cases, right? Mm-hmm. In most of these cases, the ask is actually not small. It's, hey, yeah. go book an Uber through us. That's asking for more money from consumers at the end of the day, right? Or oh, go buy a pair of new shoes and you'll mm-hmm. get more Delta points or whatever the case may be, Right. These are not small asks of a consumer uh, in a world mm-hmm. in which a consumer is presented with a myriad of, ad- of options every single day of things they can do. Uh, yeah. And everyone's asking them for money, frankly, every single day of their lives in some mm-hmm. way, shape or form. And so our reality is not only do we have something that people do more often than anything else on their smartphones, but it's completely free to the consumer. Right. And so yeah. the barrier of entry is so low where mm-hmm. the engagement you're going to see in a solution like ours is going to be naturally so very high the revenue yeah. impact is going to be tremendous. But the most important thing here is the points that you'll be able to give back to your consumer, the miles or whatever currency are going to yeah. be so significant that mm-hmm. it's going to actually impact their future purchasing behavior. If wow. you're an airline and you're in a, one of the most competitive markets in the world mm-hmm. and you have an opportunity to capture a user purchase five mm-hmm. times a year, for example, mm-hmm. you're going to want to do everything you can to capture every single one of those purchases from that consumer. And if you can put way more points in that consumer's hands at no cost to your business, the propensity of that user to then go and make a purchase with your airline is going to go up dramatically. And it's what we've seen consistently. Amazing. That was a Amazing. long-winded answer for, 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 for a really straightforward <laughs> point, but uh, it's, it's, it's just an interesting thing. And obviously I'm pretty passionate about it because I think it I makes so tell. much sense for so many brands. Totally. So the other really important point as well, Tommy, like every time I talk with particularly airline uh, loyalty program owners is they often struggle to make the connection with different demographics, which I'm guessing Mm -hmm. your solution is is incredibly powerful at doing. So, you know, whether it's Gen Z or millennials or people who are very much on the infrequent flyer um, level, there is this incredible opportunity, as you said, literally to take take, you know, uh, funded points, plug them into your program and start to give, I think you said like tens of millions of points back in value to members and keep them in literally a daily engagement ratio, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, like I think I, 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 I am of the belief that just about everyone's a gamer. Uh, so okay. whatever audiences it is that you're looking to capture, this is a solution that will help capture that audience. Right. When we think like, yeah. Females yeah. 35 plus, they're probably going to skew towards casual games, right? And word-based games. When we think males 18 to 25, uh, yeah. they're very likely going to skew towards uh, more of the strategy style games, right? Or the yeah. simulation games. Uh, mm. But there are games and there are economies of games for literally every kind of person out there. And you're yeah. right. Uh, when we think about the impact of this, it's one of the most... I think it's one of the most impactful solutions in the ad tech environment, right? Like I've spent, and you didn't even ask me about myself, but I think it's, it's an important <laughs> kind of uh, comparison to make, right? Which is, you know, yeah. I've spent something like 12, 13 years in the advertising space, right? In my entire career, uh, yeah. it was generally focused on the programmatic space. So showing ads to people in video context, banners, reward video, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, but what you find in this space is that, like I said earlier, Brands are generally just asking things of consumers, asking users to do something, asking them to buy a product. And an average consumer probably sees thousands of ads every single day, right? And so we have to ask ourselves, how do we create value exchange with customers? And I think that's something Ad Joe has done beautifully Mm. in terms of how we innovate or shift how we look at advertisement. The greatest way to look at advertisement today in a world in which people are filled with ads is by creating value exchange, right? And that's exactly what this technology does. And when we think about 
the ultimate impact of it, it's one of this, like the rare scenarios in the advertising space where you have a win-win-win situation, right? The yeah. publishers win in the sense that they get incremental revenue, incremental engagement. The advertisers yeah. win in the sense that they get to acquire new users and generally high quality users. And yeah. most importantly, the consumers win, which goes to your initial point, tens of millions of points. If yeah. you're a brand that has, say, I don't know, 5 million daily active users in your application, or even a million, yeah. we can use a smaller number, right? If you had a million daily active users in your solution, you could probably see upwards of, you know, I don't know, eight to nine figures a year easily of incremental revenue. Uh, no problem with a solution like this that, that leverages mobile gaming. If you had 10 million users, you're well over, you know, yeah. nine figures a year in incremental revenue through a solution like this. But what's most valuable about that yeah. is let's say you made $100 million in a year through a solution like ours. Mm. If you gave half of that back to your consumers, ask yourselves, what is the value of giving $50 million worth of our currency to our consumers at no cost to our business, right? What is that going to do to us? And what is that yeah. going to do to our consumers, right? It's going to do the exact thing that any yeah. loyalty manager wants a point system to do, which is it's going to drive up engagement and it's going to drive up purchasing behavior with the core competency yeah. or function of your application. Yeah, yeah. And I do want to touch on that now immediately, Tommy, but you're absolutely right. I was remiss. I was getting so excited about Fetch because we talked it off air that I didn't ask you about yourself. So I'm really happy to know that you're in the, the ad industry. And I did look on your profile, of course, uh, you know, do a bit of online stalking. I saw you're also a musician. You were a bassist, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I love music. I'm actually, I have a show tonight. Uh, so yeah, I, that's, that's my passion. I, this sounds like my passion and for all intents and purposes, I'm very passionate about what it is we do. Uh, yeah. but, but my true love is music. And so, yeah, wow. I play, uh, quite frequently I've played my whole life and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's close to everything to me next to my dog. <laughs> oh, bless you. That's incredible. Well, I joined a choir this week, which you believe Tommy. So I'm getting in the Amazing. zone as well. <laughs> what range go. are you singing in? Are you a, a tenor alto soprano? Do you know? I don't really know. I'd say on the higher end, although I don't feel like okay. I'm a soprano, but it was like a, a random group of 13 women in somebody's apartment just going, let's sing some uh, Arabic music or, you know, anyway, a beautiful group. It was super fun, That's I have amazing. to say. That's such we a were cool all experience. It really is. We were very inspired, I have to say, when we left. So thank you for, for, for making sure that we got a bit of insight into you as a person <laughs> and, uh, and a dog lover. I'm a cat lover on this side as well as the audience knows. So there you go. <laughs> uh, I, Brilliant. My dog, yeah. uh, he hates cats. So I'm sorry. <laughs> he really hates them. <laughs> okay. That's super funny. Super funny. So listen, thank you for all of those insights. Um, and just to pick up on what I think is a very important business point, that you just made there. Um, so obviously the funding, as you said, is something that you're bringing in the form of the revenues from the gaming companies who are yeah. super inspired and excited about the, I suppose, combination of the quantity and the quality of members yeah. of loyalty programs in general. So no question yeah. about the fit, the win-win-win. Am I right in understanding what you said is that, of course, there's a decision then made by the loyalty program owner in terms of what proportion of the revenue they award back to members and I yeah. guess maybe keep some as a program owner themselves for the bottom line? Yeah, yeah. We have, yeah. We have partners that, that uh, span a pretty wide range of how much of the revenue they decide to keep and how much they give. Like I have partners that full on give 100% of the revenue back to the consumers because they know funding that many points will yeah. really drive up so many purchases for them and, again, drive that yeah. functionality of yeah. the application. But I have tons of partners as well who, who work on uh, more lucrative rev shares that, that impact their bottom line and their monetization in really yeah. significant ways, as I mentioned before, right? So yeah. it is a big decision that our partners make uh, during this process. Yeah. It's something they can adjust, and we work with them on best practices as related to mm. how do we reward users and what kind of percentage do we give back to them. But uh, yeah. it is a really flexible piece of technology in that regard and one that can yield a lot of benefits for both parties, obviously. Amazing. Yeah. And and I, I agree, there's a lot of diversity, even in terms of how the loyalty industry is evolving. You know, again, just to talk about airlines, it's very topical just because of our recent conference here. You know, a lot of them are being asked to go back to driving, you know, flight behavior, you know, share of wallet in their own category. Mm -hmm. And yet other sectors are being asked very much, okay, so what is the bottom line contribution, you know, beyond retention, which of course is always extremely important 
important, but then, you know, how much are we selling our points for and what other ancillary revenues do we earn as a loyalty program owner? So I, I guess that's what I liked about what you guys are doing is you're facilitating that in a way that's fairly easy to, I guess, plug into a loyalty program with um, all of that content essentially available from your side. And then it's up to them, uh, yeah. I guess, how they publish it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a beautiful solution in that regard. And obviously I'm biased, but I, I do believe yeah. that um, for me, it's like a light switch. It's like you could, you could integrate our solution in a couple of days, you know, and you'd go through testing for like a week or two or whatever. Yeah. Whatever, kind of irrelevant. But the yeah. ultimate takeaway here is you put this in and like that, you have access to a thousand, 1200 games in, in your application, right? And games that we then personalized for each particular user that comes into your experience to make sure that we're talking to your users in yeah. a way that's impactful for them and actually matters to them, right? Mm. For example, mm. we mentioned before, right? The, 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 the profile of gamers, because it's so broad, it can be so diverse, obviously, mm. right? In terms mm. of what are the things we like and don't like. And so we do a really good job as a business. We yeah. developed algorithms that I think are quite sophisticated in identifying mm. who is this user? What do they have the highest propensity to enjoy? Let's put those kinds of games in front of them so they can really get as much mm. value out of this loyalty program as possible. So it's somewhere we focus quite a bit of, of energy and time. I can imagine. So it sounds like the um, the relevance, and again, for my audience, for everyone listening here, obviously I'm here to represent them. I'm guessing the, it's, it's relevant for everyone who you know, shares our belief. Uh, both you and I have talked about this um, appetite and um, interest and excitement. And I don't want to use the word addiction, but in some cases, maybe it goes that far. But the appetite for gaming, I guess any loyalty program owner that has um, a similar understanding that their members are either already doing that or want to do that, then this is something they should think about. Is that fair to say? It's yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I very strongly believe that. Right. I think um, like we said before, right? Like if you're a low, if you're a low to program, let's take a different vertical. We've talked about travel a lot. If you're in like the QSR space, right. Ask yourself how many times is someone buying a hamburger every week? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and the answer for, again, heavy users certainly is probably still not every day, but it's, it's maybe frequently, but for your average user, it's maybe once every week or two. Right. Yeah. Uh, the question that I pose to everyone is, okay, if people are gaming every day, what would mm. the world look like for you if every time someone played Candy Crush, it led to them being a more loyal customer to your brand? That's the real power here, right? Is, is harnessing yeah. that yeah. thing that people do every day and tying it back to your brand by creating that value exchange with customers, right? That's yeah. what this solution does. And that's why I really think it's applicable to any loyalty program, even mm -hmm. loyalty programs that see higher frequency of, of, of use every day, mm -hmm. just broadening the ways in pe which people can earn. We mm -hmm. see it time and time again. It yields incremental revenue and it yields incremental engagement. That's a really core piece here as well. Yeah. And what are they, I suppose, what, you know, when you have those initial conversations um, and I'm thinking, you know, when I was running loyalty programs myself or even, you know, big websites in, in any vertical, you know, introducing something like this, there's, there's always a concern about, you know, could it, for example, cannibalize our yeah. core business? Tell us a bit about that, because I know you also wanted sure. to make sure like that's a strong um, concern that a lot of people might have if they haven't yet yeah. experienced working with you guys. So so tell us what, what do you see happening on that side? Yeah, of course. Um, I think it's a legitimate concern for someone to have, right? Anytime you take someone out of your application, you run yeah. the risk that they won't come back. That's that's the reality of it, right? Yeah. Uh, what we've done though is we create a mechanism that will draw people back because again, we, we, we add this component of value exchange into the entire environment, right? And okay. so ultimately what we've seen uh, is twofold. It's non-cannibalizing because generally speaking, consumers don't make the decision between playing a game and buying tickets for, for their for a trip, right? They don't make the decision or yeah. they're, they're independent decisions whether you, again, want to eat a hamburger today or you want to play Monopoly Go today, right? These things exist in kind of different worlds. Uh, and to mm -hmm. that end, we see that it doesn't cannibalize core functionality of app, but most importantly, actually what we've seen, for example, with Fetch, um, this is a solution, like I mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, right? Historically, they focus on CPG partnerships. That's been their bread and butter for a really long time, right? And mm -hmm. they've obviously diversified uh, over the course of time. But what we found with them was 
people that engage with the play solution are our powered solution within their application. Uh, mm. 85% of those people uh, executed weekly receipt scanning, which was 10% higher than their baseline. And they saw that people uh, who engaged with our solution had an increase in app open of around 5.2%, right? And so not only did this solution not cannibalize their existing efforts, but yeah. it actually drove incremental growth of engagement against the core functionality of the application. Again, because of my belief that they added more value to consumers' yeah. lives in more diverse ways. And anytime you give someone more value to a consumer, you, yeah. know, you start to be seen as more of a hub for things as opposed to a place to go for a specific thing, right? Which I think is really yeah. valuable when we think about loyalty. Yeah, absolutely. I've often described myself, Tommy, as a points junkie, and I can totally see this <laughs> feeding into all of that. It's it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. It's a, I don't know, that a points junkie. That's a really funny thing to call yourself. Uh, totally. I love it, though. That's how I feel. It's, so it's like I could feel myself and I'll give you a real life example, Tommy. Again, it's back in travel, but with the, with the hotel um, in this instance, we took uh, both myself and my husband uh, co-brand cards here with the Marriott Bonvoy group, actually. So again, global brand already aware of it, but the, um, the acquisition offer was so strong that like I'm supervising my husband's spending behavior to make sure he reaches that threshold <laughs> so we could go and have our two nights away that I've been promised. So it, it works. It's I mean, amazing. It really is. Like, nobody... like what we're doing. It, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Paul. But like, what we're doing is very is like not dissimilar from what you just described, right? Yeah. Like it's it's very analogous. You have to reach a certain milestone in Marriott points to get some kind of reward. We're yeah. taking that exact same concept and just yeah. applying it to the mobile gaming space, right? Yeah. Like a space where people spend so much time, and that's, yeah. that's again a lot of the powers. None of yeah. this is alien to consumers, right? It's all stuff they're doing every day already in yeah. terms of A, yeah. gaming, but B, familiarity yeah. with having to reach milestones or having to do certain things to yeah. accrue some value back, right? And we've just yeah. applied it to the gaming space. Totally, yeah. And bringing it closer, as you said, to their existing brand. So there is that that reason yeah. to engage every day. So my, my, my final example actually is um, just talking again with them, with the guys last week at the conference. Um, we were asking, same question, you know, what's your favorite loyalty program? And uh, we had a fabulous girl from uh, Qantas Loyalty in Australia. And she gave the example of, um, you already talked about it, My McDonald's, which down in Australia is called My Mackers, uh, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> totally cool. I love name. that so much. Yeah, yeah, that's an amazing name. But that's what she's saying is like, okay, he's not the one with the, the car dad buying the burgers. He's the one engaging at 14 years old. He's the one engaging with the game that McDonald's has made available. So mm -hmm. I thought that was incredible. And it was a bit of a light bulb moment for me to go, actually, you know, at 14 years old, well, there's a life ahead. You know, when we talk about lifetime value, that's an amazing potential customer for McDonald's because of their gaming strategy. I just thought it was brilliant. Yeah, no, it's an amazing strategy. Um, mm. They're obviously tapping into so much of what I've mentioned, right? Which is that, that, yeah. that pervasive yeah. interest in games. Yeah. Uh, I see that strategy um, leveraged, not frequently, but I see it coming to, to bear more, which is, I think what you're describing here is probably McDonald's created their own game that lived within inside yes. their application, correct? Right? Exactly. And I think yeah. it's an amazing strategy uh, yeah. to implement, to, to deliver mm. that form of gamification, Mm. What we've done is a little different in the sense that we argue to loyalty brands that you don't in some ways have to rewrite the wheel and try to develop your own game, which is, it's not easy, right? Developing That's a true. game that people really like yeah. is a really cumbersome, hard, uh, significant investment to make, right? And our argument is yeah. the games are already there, right? There, there's already <laughs> like, you know, thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands of games in the stores, Apple yeah. and, and Google Play stores that people yeah. know and love, right? Mm -hmm. And you can leverage this in existing infrastructure yeah. while, again, getting incremental revenue, giving points back to users, driving incremental engagement. I keep hammering these value props, but that's yeah. really the, the, the massive trade-off here is you don't have to go and, and build something of yeah. your own. There's yeah. a whole economy and a whole landscape that you can just tap into, again, yeah. with the flick of a switch. Amazing. Well, clearly I've drunk the Kool-Aid and we're super happy <laughs> <laughs> to be working with you guys just to bring this kind of solution to the attention of our audience. So definitely it makes sense, as you said. Um, so I don't get enthusiastic about things I don't understand. This I totally get. So thank you for explaining it so clearly, Tommy. So listen, so I don't think... To. Yeah, it's, it's, it's genuinely cool. So um, yeah, I don't have any more questions for you today. 
Do you have any other parting words of wisdom that you want to share with our audience before we wrap up? Yeah, I, I, I talk a lot, so I'm always happy to talk more, I think. But uh, <laughs> um, no, I mean, my parting words is, is just consider this. Consider, consider what this could mean for your brand, right? Consider yeah. the possibility that while your brand, you might feel it doesn't align with gaming, your consumers yeah. align with gaming, right? And they're yeah. probably gaming quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself the question, is there an opportunity for us to take advantage of this consumer interest in gaming? We're likely yeah. taking advantage of consumer interest in so many other things, whether it's retail, whether it's travel, et cetera, et cetera. If someone's doing a specific action around 40 plus percent of their time on their smartphone, is that worth considering as a piece of your loyalty strategy, right? My argument would be yes, because you're hard pressed to find many other things that people do over 40% of their time on their smartphones, right? And yeah. there is a significant opportunity uh, to tap into that consumer interest while deriving Mm. sizable incremental revenue uh, while producing or, or ingesting uh, scalable points into your ecosystem at no cost to your brand, which obviously will drive up engagement, revenue, yeah. et cetera. So that's, that's I just cool. say consider it, right? The, consider the opportunity <laughs> within gaming. Amazing. Absolutely. Well, wise words indeed. Consider it. It's definitely something I know everybody listening to this is definitely going to be at least doing the consideration piece, Tommy. So thank you for doing such an incredible job and sharing that with us. So I'll use your formal uh, full name just to, to sign off. So Thomas Yiannopoulos, VP of Revenue for the Americas for Adjo. Thank you so much from Let's Talk Loyalty and Loyalty TV. Thanks so much, Paul.